Hi friends, welcome back to Mule 4 series of learning videos. I am Shivatan Kamani, an integration technical architect. So recently we have been seeing about uh, the steps that are to be done uh, during the design phase. So as a part of the design phase, uh, it's very important to design or create uh, uh, error handling framework before the development uh, aspect begins. So uh, in this video, we have been seeing about error handling framework and I have released last video on the first step about creating the error handling framework. And in this video, we are going to see some critical steps uh, uh, before we start developing the error handling framework. Let's get started. To arrive at or to complete this particular stage of the error handling framework, we need to talk about the most important and most powerful design tool that we need to use uh, while we are uh, uh, designing the error handling framework. So this tool is very, very critical and important. And this tool is required to visualize the traceability. And this tool, tool is also very, very important and critical to arrive at the alternate actions when there is an error happening. Let's see what that critical and important, the most powerful design tool is. Here we go. The most important and the most inexpensive design tool is our imagination and the visualization. The reason why I insist this is more often uh, we get busy ourselves and we go through the requirements back and then we uh, do or we seek a lot of tools to do some actions to do the design activities. But the most critical is to relax ourselves, think about uh, the requirements and then uh, fly high with our imagination about uh, how we can design the overall API with error handling framework. So here are some steps on how or uh, what to visualize uh, for creating the error handling framework. Here we go. So we need to visualize uh, uh, five important things uh, to arrive at the error handling framework. Let's go one by one. So first, before even uh, talking about uh, the error handling framework, imagine that you have completed and uh, the, your API is all the way going up to production. Then what are you going to do uh, when you are uh, going to do the uh, operations like production support. So when there is an error happening, so how do we know that that failure exists? Sometimes it might be um, behind the scene, it will be burning uh, without even uh, bringing to our notice. And only upon going into the console and then looking at something, then we will, it will get visualized. So uh, we need to visualize on how we need to come to know the error. So that's the first and foremost step. The second one is how to identify the failure. But suppose if you have a mechanism to know that there is a failure, then how we do identify and what are the different mechanisms to trace that failure. Then the third one is to trace the error reason. You need to know the specific reason of the failure and then uh, because only if you know the reason you will be able to take the corrective action. Number four, what is the failed message payload? Sometimes we will know all the errors, but uh, we will not be able to trace the exact payload uh, due to the absence of the payload. Uh, we will have some complexity to do this uh, error recovery. And step number five is to visualize uh, on how we are going to recover from the error. So we have all the failure reason and we have the payload and so what? So how, what, we, what do we do with that payload in order to recover from that particular error scenario? So these are the things that we need to visualize based on our specific requirements, whatever domain you are working with, whatever tools you are working with, whether it is MuleSoft, whether it is WSO2 or Dell Boomi. So these are the things that are important for a project or to build the error handling framework, which will help us after uh, uh, the complete API is developed and then deployed into production, you will come to know uh, the use of all this uh, based on the error handling framework. The key aspect for the success of error handling framework is traceability. If you are capable of doing the traceability on what error happened and what is the reason behind it, then that will be the great success for the project. And even if error happens, you will be able to trace and then recover it from the failure. Here are some thumb rules for traceability. First, we need to identify the purpose and the log level. So many times we do 
hell lot of logging uh, and if you do the console log if you see the logs are pouring down uh, flooding the uh, console and then exceeding the size sometimes uh, uh, if the size exceeded it will get lost and then you will not be able to trace the logs for a specific section so uh, you need to be very careful on the purpose of each log statement that you are making in the flow number two do not do over logging don't do the entire stuff uh, uh, I mean that is not uh, the purpose of the logging and that's not required also so the thumb rule for logging the uh, content is to log the payload and the response for all integration points so under the API you will be calling uh, different intersection points for example it should it could be database it could be external API tools so whenever you have these integration junction points uh, you need to ensure that you are logging the payload as well as response and also you need to take care uh, not logging the critical contents like personal information so you need to take care of that then you need to log the message id so if you are using a uh, mule 3 or mule 4 there is there are some uh, uh, capability under the logger to specify the message id which is a correlation id so when you are doing the transaction we should be able to trace uh, uh, which particular uh, uh, transaction that we are talking about if suppose you have a lot of logs then you should be able to isolate uh, the logs for the specific transaction so and hence we need to do this uh, uh, correlation id or uh, the correlation id can be system generated or sometimes you can generate your own correlation id based on the input payload and then you can use it throughout the transaction so i have another video on how to prepare these keys which serves as a correlation id and you can please refer that and can get some idea on how to prepare such id based on the input payload so the correlation id will be unique even though the payload is uh, uh, very long and lengthy and then we can convert that into a specific correlation id you can please refer that video and uh, number five you need to log the status of uh, api feature suppose you are calling so many uh, integration points like database or external web services you need to log whether uh, that particular call is succeeded or failed so uh, that's very important to know the status of every integration point number six you need to track the message payload and status somewhere because uh, referring to the console logs will be good but uh, uh, it's critical to have some uh, consolidation uh, like a database table where you can go and look at the statuses uh, as a bird's eye view instead of uh, going through the console that contains uh, 10 gb of logs so that will always be difficult to refer the tools like splunk you will have a lot of logs but you will have difficulty to go through the logs and isolate uh, onto the specific transaction so it's always better track the message payload and status in terms of the database table so in order to log the transaction and to track a specific transaction uh, from the beginning till the end so there is always a good idea uh, to log the uh, content or the log the critical events uh, in terms of uh, stage wise sequence so uh, this is why i said uh, uh, it's always important to have your own imagination because this is all based on your requirement and then how comfortable you are or how you will trace your error and then how fast you will be recovering it so uh, so this is one of the idea that i use uh, in our projects and uh, so we have uh, uh, something called uh, stage wise logs or some sequence which will help us always to trace where the error happened by looking at it uh, uh, for example uh, if you look at this log we have a stage one received stage two validation completed stage three order verified stage four payment initiated and approved stage five order sent for fulfillment so there is some flow that indicates uh, the overall uh, status of the transaction this is about one particular transaction because uh, you can see here there is an uh, um, order id or correlation id so when you search for the console logs you can search for this particular id so somehow you will come to know this correlation id uh, that's uh, that failed and then if you look at this console log that will give you only the logs about the specific transaction and then it will give the clear map of what happened 
so this is one of the idea where you can innovate uh, you can do some uh, logging innovatively in such a way that you can trace it quickly and this particular uh, diagram indicates uh, how we are going to recover from error because this is also a part of uh, error handling framework so this should uh, this diagram should give a clear indication of uh, where the error message is going to go and in which uh, message queue you are going to put the uh, messages that are valid and in which queue we are going to uh, place the uh, failed or error messages that can't be recovered and then how we are going to make the alert mechanism so this will give you this should be a part of uh, uh, design diagram as well as uh, uh, this must uh, be implemented as a part of error handling framework And finally, we are going to see as a part of traceability, we need to have audit trail database table. It's always good, although it's a very old method of uh, uh, tracking, uh, but it's still effective and uh, we still use in our project uh, uh, to do this uh, uh, audit trail mechanism where we track critical data. So we don't flood it with uh, unnecessary data, but it's only things that are very much required. Like for example, it's a database table ID and it could be incremental and the date in which the transaction initiated, the time and the order ID, this could be the correlation ID that I was talking about and the payload. Payload can be club object uh, so that you can put the entire payload there if you have a database table space and uh, if you are not particular about storing the payloads you can uh, avoid it so that you can uh, take the payload from the console logs if you know the uh, order ID or correlation ID, you will be able to recover the payload from the logs. So it's up to you. And you need to have a response status, like whether it's received or validated or uh, uh, so uh, which particular transaction failed. So maybe you can have uh, uh, very high level information of uh, failure that will always be helpful. And if it is success, you can always uh, uh, log as OK. And uh, finally, the status, the status will be success or failure. So this will give you uh, overall idea when you have uh, say thousands of transactions happening, you can quickly go to the table and then you can select uh, the records where the status equal to failure, then you can, you can quickly identify whether there are any failures at all so that you can act on it proactively. So that's the traceability in this uh, short video uh, as a part of error handling framework. And uh, we will take uh, next sequence of activities uh, to build error handling framework in the next set of videos. And hope you liked it. And uh, this is not just for error handling framework. These are the general principles and guidelines uh, on how you, you should design the APA uh, with uh, uh, logging mechanisms and some uh, best practices. So you can take it that way also. So hope you like this video. And if so, please uh, hit thumbs up button and then subscribe my videos. And uh, please look for my next set of videos on error handling framework shortly. Again, thanks for watching. Bye.